I think the in terms of this quarter, the the earnings impact was really generated by a number of one-time items. Uh, and I think the, the real focus for our investors and for our analysts right now is a cash flow story. And if you look at it from that perspective, I think it was an extraordinarily good quarter. Uh, the company produced uh, over $700 million of free cash flow, and that is after absorbing a $325 million hedging loss. So if you think about it, this is a company that has the ability in reasonable uh, commodity price environment of, of easily delivering a billion dollars a quarter of cash flow and I think that's a really good outcome and the, the, the issues on, on the loss is really just noise around uh, some write-offs. You, you also are dealing with that depressed price or the price differential between Western Canadian oil and U.S. oil prices. Uh, you, you take it on both sides, because on the one hand, uh, you get hurt by it on the pr production side. You benefit on the refinery side. So how does it come out in the wash for you? Well, uh, you know, if you think about our refinery business, it, it effectively provides us with about a 25% hedge or offset to our commodity position in the upstream business. So uh, although we, we definitely delivered uh, record uh, profits and, and, and profitability out of, out of the refining business in the U.S., uh, that obviously uh, was, uh, was challenged by the, uh, the wide differentials. I, th I think it does do a pretty good job of, of, ex of, of showing uh, the value that is being created uh, by Canadians having to sell their crude at, at the lowest price in the world, primarily to uh, to U.S. to U.S. refiners, and it, it, I think that's a pretty good example of the challenges right now. So, what would you like to see happen to to solve that? We've got not just that, of course, but also the maintenance schedule at U.S. refineries also affecting uh, your ability to ship oil. Uh, what, what are the solutions other than time? Well, I mean, I, it, and you kind of you kind of hit on it. I, I think we're going to see some improvement of of that wide differential when we see some of the U.S. refinery fleet that is presently down for turnaround coming back. I think we're going to see further improvement as rail uh, oil by rail ramps up uh, over the next couple of quarters. Uh, but really, I mean, let, let's be clear: this this is a problem that has been created by a lack of pipeline takeaway. And so what is really going to solve this problem is getting those pipelines built. There's nothing more urgent that I can see for our country in terms of economic stimulus than to get those pipelines built. In the meantime, though, you're considering actually storing oil? Uh, is that just putting it, putting it in caverns again and waiting for a better price? Yeah, one of the, one of the very unique things about Synovus is that uh, we, we call it dynamic storage, but in essence, we have the ability to continue injecting steam into our SAGD reservoirs while turning down the pumps and in essence, storing uh, oil temporarily in the reservoir that we can bring out in a later period where the differential, uh, it, when, when we're in a better differential period. We've done that in the past. We are doing that right now. But at the same time, we're also uh, very aggressively activating about 3 million barrels of salt cavern storage that we have both up in the oil sands and at our Bruderheim rail facility, which just gives us further... Uh, further flexibility to uh, continue to produce that oil, uh, but but not sell it and wait for uh, wait for a day in the future when the value is higher.